Hey, didn't see you there. I'm Mari and this is Aubrey and welcome back to another service. Today we'll be continuing with our series, Jesus' Blueprint for His Disciples, and we'll also be partaking in communion, so please have your elements ready. Now let's say a quick prayer before we head into worship. Dear Lord, thank you that we can gather here virtually today, and you know, thank you that everyone is taking the time to just come together and make time for you, um, despite all the craziness that's happening in their own lives. Um, thank you for you know, just keeping us safe and keeping us healthy, um, protecting everyone um, from, you know, just daily hardships. Please continue to be with us as we listen to this service and, yeah, just really speak to us today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now let's head into worship.
When the music fades And all is stripped away And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it And it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words. Nothing compares to this 
What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was great. Thank you, worship team. So good to worship and thank all of you for tuning in again this week. We're going to be celebrating communion this week. You know, in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, Paul writes this, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night that he was, in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And, you know, as we celebrate communion today, let's um, really remember who Jesus is, all that he's done, and really to remember his blueprint for our lives. You know, as we've been going through this series, let's remember all the things he said that living according to his blueprint is just so much, it's so different from that of the world. And so let's remember that and let's thank the Lord Jesus for all that he's done for us as we celebrate communion. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your great love for us that you sent your son, the Lord Jesus, to come and to be the sacrifice for our sin. And we come here and we gather together to say thank you and that we remember and we say thank you Lord Jesus for all you have done 
that you died for us and that this bread that we are about to partake today is really your body broken for us. And this cup is the cup of the new covenant that was made possible because of your blood that was shed for us. And so we thank you, we remember, and we say, Father, we thank you for your son and his blueprint for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat and let's drink. You know, this week we are continuing to look at Jesus' blueprint for his disciples as we walk through his Sermon on the Mount found in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. Um, I really hope that it's been a good and challenging series for you. I know that it really has been for me. You know, I got to admit, I love when I get encouragement from others. I really appreciate it, you know, when someone is blessed by something God has done, uh, uh, through me or has said stuff through me and you know feeling encouraged and and appreciated is really a good thing but what easily happens is that it can turn into looking to others to validate what I do above all else including God you know it can lead um, to doing things in such a way um, as to be admired by the people around me and then all of a sudden, I go from serving out of a sense of call and obedience to God to something that I do to gain the admiration and the applause of those around me. And in doing that, I just head down a course that really is not according to Jesus' blueprint for his disciples. You know, I tend to believe that it's a challenge that many of us face. You know, to do things for the admiration and the applause of others. You know, so much so that Jesus addresses this very thing right here in his Sermon on the Mount. You know, we can do this at work, at school, in our families, with our friends, you know, whenever we're with others. You know, it's instead of helping someone out of love for them and really for God, we do things so that others will look at us as such a wonderful person. You know, instead of serving at like the Next Step Homeless Shelter out of love for the residents and love for God, we serve because it, it makes us look like an honorable person. You know, it's a challenge because we all love to be loved. We all love to be admired and applauded. And you know, I don't think it's a bad thing in and of itself. But, but if we begin to do things for that reason, it's something that will never ever satisfy. We will do things and then afterwards be disappointed or disgruntled um, that no one said anything about all that we did. You know, we might even get frustrated at how ungrateful people are. And, and we just forget why we are doing things in the first place, out of love and obedience to God, not for the recognition and the applause of others. And one of the biggest things that happens is that we miss out on something so valuable, so precious that God himself wants to give us and to bless us with. And that's what Jesus is addressing here in this section of his Sermon on the Mount that we're going to be looking at. You know, once again, Jesus teaches that following him is far better. It's a far better way to live. It's just so different from that of the world, but it's a far better way to live. And again, yes, it's, it's so much better, but it's not easier. And I pray that we would all ask for help of the Holy Spirit and ask Him to speak to our hearts that we would experience a breakthrough in our lives. Let's pray right now. Father, we pray that you would speak to us through your word. Holy Spirit, come and speak to our hearts now. We ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's uh, get into this section of Jesus' blueprint for his disciples. The first thing is this. Jesus, there's Jesus' admonition, and he says, beware. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, we read this. 
Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Jesus uses the word beware for the first time here in his sermon. It's something that he has said a bunch of times in addressing the Pharisees. You know, that religious, a uh, very religious group who really sought to strictly follow the letter of the law. And, and what he's saying is, is the word beware is to pay, to really pay attention, to give heed to what he is warning us about. And Jesus' admonition is he's saying to beware of practicing your righteousness before men just to be noticed by them. And he's saying to look at the motivation of your heart when you do anything, especially when you do things out of obedience to God. You know, he says, don't be like the Pharisees who would do things to make sure they were noticed and they were applauded by others. Jesus says, beware, because if you do, you will be disappointed and you will miss out on any blessing and reward that God wants to give you. You know, Anne Graham Lotz, um, she really experienced a lot of pressure being the daughter of Billy Graham. And in an interview, uh, she shared the following. She said, you know, when I was 17 years old, I had <clears throat> people trying to force me into their mold. You know, everyone had an idea of what Billy Graham's daughter ought to be like, look like, and people who should be my friends. And, you know, I felt very bound by the opinions of other people. And someone told me, Anne, you're looking at God, your relationship with God, and it's colored, like looking through a prism. You know it's colored by all, the, all these people's opinions. And you need to just look at him directly. And she goes on to say, I made the decision <clears throat> that when I was 17 to live my life to please God. I knew that if I pleased God, my parents, my grandparents would be pleased. Some people would not understand the choices that I made and what I did. But you cannot please everyone anyway. And I made the choice when I was 17 to live my life for an audience of one. You know, Jesus' warning and his blueprint is this. Don't live your life for the admiration and the applause of others. Instead, live your life for the audience, for an audience of one. And the tempting thing is, is to seek the applause of others because it's, it feels good, you know. But Jesus is saying, don't give in to that. Follow his blueprints for your life and live for an audience of one. And Jesus goes on here to give two examples in, in two very common areas where it's so easy to be like the Pharisees and seek the applause of others. <clears throat> and so the first thing is this. giving It's giving for an audience of one. One area we do out of obedience to God is giving. And I just love what Dave Yadamari Chan said one day before we took offering in one of our services. He said that our giving was not a donation, but really an act of worship and obedience to God. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 2, the first part of verse 2, he says this, So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and and in the streets, so that they may be honored by men. See, there was this little ritual that the Pharisees did when they gave money to the poor. They would go over to the offering container, led there, believe it or not, by trumpeteers who literally blew a loud fanfare as everyone would see and would notice what they were doing. It was giving for the applause of others. And Jesus goes on in verse 2 to say, Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. You know that phrase, truly I say to you, really has the force of an oath. Jesus is saying, mark it down. You can count it. You can take it to the bank. Jesus is saying, you can be rest assured that you, you know, when you give, seeking to be admired by others, you will get your reward. Others will admire you. They will admire your generosity 
at least for that moment. But he goes on in verse 3. But when you give, this is my blueprint for you. When you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving will be in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You know, giving really is, like Dave said, an act of worship and obedience to God. You know, we give to those in need because God is calling us to do so. You know, to give for an audience of one means that you give so only God will see what you do, you're doing. You know, you don't draw attention to yourself. You know, you don't do it to, to gain the admiration of others. You do it out of obedience and love for God. And when you do, God is your audience and He will reward you. Jesus doesn't go into what the reward will be right here, but a reward from God Almighty is going to be so much better than anything we could get from others, especially just their admiration. Here's some things the Bible says. In Proverbs 19, 17, we read, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and He will reward them for what they have done. In Psalm 41, verse 1, the Bible says, Blessed are those who have regard for the weak, the Lord delivers them in times of trouble. You know, following Jesus is living your life and giving for an audience of one. Another area that Jesus is talking about that we do in obedience to God is praying. That we are to pray to an audience of one. In verse 5, we read, When you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. And again, Jesus is pointing out what the Pharisees did. They prayed more to be seen by others than to connect with God. And it's interesting, again, that again, Jesus has used the word, uses the word hypocrite. And that's a word... Um, that referred to, in the Greek, it referred to an actor. It was used for those who, who played roles and who saw the world as their stage. And that's exactly what the Pharisees did and what Jesus is warning us against. Jesus says, truly I say to you, he's saying, you can take it to the bank. Those who pray to be seen by others will be rewarded with just that. Others will see them and they'd go, whoa, look at that. Look at Mark. He sure can pray. And that's it. But the reward will not be being heard by God. In verse, in verse 6, Jesus goes on to say, But you, here's my blueprint for you. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who, who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. And Jesus is saying to pray to an audience of one, to focus on who you are praying to, that you are in the presence of Almighty God. And that's all that matters. It's not about you. It's about the person you are praying to, the one who loves you, the one who hears you, the one who knows everything about you, and he knows everything that you need. And Jesus goes on and he, and he adds and he says, it's not, you know, it's not how you pray. It's not about the number of words you use or how many times you repeat stuff. It's really about being with God Almighty who loves you, who hears you. It's, it's praying to an audience of one. See, because God knows you and He knows what you need and God will reward you. In Hebrews 4 verse 16, we read, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. I love that. There we will receive His mercy 
and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. In John 15, 7, Jesus says, But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Isn't having your prayers answered and getting grace and help when you need it the most a far better reward than just the admiration of others for the way you pray? Jesus' exhortation, pray, pray for an audience, pray to an audience of one. Jesus was never manipulated by crowds or, or the approval or the disapproval of anybody else. He lived for, the, uh, for an audience of one. He said in John 5.30 that his focus was to please the one who sent him. When you're always worried about what other people think of you, you can't be who God wants you to be. You know, you look to be rewarded um, for what you do by others and you miss out on the rewards that God has for you. You know, Annie Graham Lotz, Billy Graham's daughter, went on to say in that interview, that is a very solemn thing, living for an audience of one that stays with me every day. I know that I'm going to stand before him. It is what motivated me to surrender in the first place. At the age of 16, I know I'm going to stand before him. I know I'm going to give an account for the way I not just live my life personally, but also how I served him. With all my heart, I want to fulfill the purpose that he has for my life. I know he has a purpose for me. I want to fulfill it. In fact, one of the verses he gave to me is in Philippians 1. After my husband went to heaven, it says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And then it says, you know, that I am left behind, and, and I'm not going to quote it outright, but I have been left here because there's, some, there's still some fruitful labor for me to do. I have a strong sense that God has taken my mother, my father, and my husband. In a very real way, I am a widow and I am an orphan, but I have a strong sense of purpose. God has me here for a reason. I want to fulfill that reason and fulfill the purpose that he has for my life before I see him face to face. Friends, that's what Jesus is talking about here in this passage. That's what living for an audience of one looks like. Let's take Jesus' words to heart. Let's encourage each other. Let's look um, really to every day of our lives, like Annie Graham Lotz, to, that, who said, God has me here for a reason, that I want to fulfill that reason, and I want to fulfill the purpose that he, has, that he has for my life before I see him face to face. Let's choose to live for an audience of one. All right, let's pray. Father, I, I just pray that, that we would all choose to live for an audience of one. That to live for your applause is more important than anything else. Father, I pray that we would see um, just the just the power in doing so that man, I don't think anyone here would just want uh, a reward of the admiration of others or just people looking at us like wow that guy sure can pray what a spiritual person that is that we want our reward to be from you God. that we want to be pleasing to you I pray that you would give us the grace to live for an audience of one so I thank you father for your word I thank you for Jesus' blueprint for our lives, and I pray for your grace and your strength to live that out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, thanks again for, for tuning in, but, but really I want to ask, you know, please register and sign up on our website for our special Let's Exalt the Lord Together gathering on Saturday, August 7th at 3 o'clock Hawaii Standard Time at the Alamana Garden Lanai. You know, if you're able to make it, I think 
that it will be it is going to be such an important time for us to gather and also a very powerful time because worship and prayer are real weapons that God has given to all of us. I believe our time together will be a glorious time where we're going to be worshiping and praying to an audience of one. So please register on our website. Please be assured that we will do everything to make sure that it is a safe environment for everyone who attends. We're going to follow all the guidelines. We're going to uh, take temperature. We're going to do social distancing. We're going to be, we're all going to be wearing masks. And following our time together, we're just going to be dismissing everybody in Jesus' name and um, have everyone just leave the room and, and then go outside to a designated place outside in the parking lot to pick up bentos and self-contained communion cups that they can enjoy and celebrate on their own. Please attend if you're able to. And again, you know, just so that we can come together as we worship and pray to an audience of one. And you know, if, you're not un if you are unable to attend or you're just not comfortable to do so at this time, we will be live streaming our gathering so you can join us and you can join in as we exalt the Lord together. So please register um, if you can. We're gonna have to put in our head count very soon, all right? God bless you, have a great week. See you on Saturday. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for that message. Please don't forget to tune in next week as we continue with our series, Jesus' Blueprint for His Disciples, Messages from the Sermon on the Mount. Um, also, don't forget that we'll be having our first in-person gathering on Saturday, August 7th at 3 p.m. at the Alamana Garden Hotel Garden Lanai. Seating will be limited, so please don't forget to sign up on our website. Our uh, family has generously donated bentos, so bentos will be provided for anyone, I mean for everyone who will be coming. Also, we'll be distributing sealed community cups so that we can gather in small groups and have communion together. Also, if you are unable or uncomfortable to join in our in-person gathering, then we will also be live streaming this as well. Um, please also don't forget to check out our Blessed Business page on our website um, to help local businesses in our community. And as always, don't forget tithes and offerings. You can um, send it three ways, the Church Center app, through the website, or through the mail. Finally, remember to stay to connected, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and like this video and press the notification bell so you can always stay up to date on when we film again. Um, that's it from us. We'll see you sometime soon. Goodbye. Bye.